So this is where I'm going to be spending the next seven days of my life. Since y'all are going to be spending the next part of the episode in here with me, I'm going to give you a crash tour of the place just so that you're not completely lost throughout this video. So this is the entrance, dining room, dish storage, some of the spice rack, our cooking space, the bakery, baby room slash relaxing room, dishwasher, the fridge, freezer, milk room, second entrance, potato peeling room, and the mop room, the head cook's fridge, and this is the head cook's mini Walmart. It's got everything you need. And whatever it doesn't have, you probably don't need. And the coffee counter. By far, the most important place in the kitchen. Kind of. Here's a little disclaimer before we start. It would take an entire film crew to document one day of a cook week. And since I am a one-woman cameraman, I just took my camera to the kitchen every day for an entire week. So no, we don't eat this much food. No, we don't do this much stuff in one day. This video was just a little exaggeration for educational purposes only. But I will be going through the day as the day would go. It's just a little exaggerated for educational purposes only. But it kind of gives you a glimpse inside the average day of a cook. Cooking for 170 people. Alrighty, let's get started. So you know the saying, too many cooks in the kitchen spoil the soup? Well, we have four and the soup tastes amazing. At least that's what I've heard. This girl is cooking here. Liz, you're cooking again. You always seem to be the instigator of all my work. The first cook is responsible for planning the week's menu, Pinterest,ing the recipes, and generally oversees everything. And she gets the brunt of the blow if things don't turn out. And then we have the second cook, the third cook, and the fourth cook. The fourth cook gets all the compliments if the food does turn out, which I have nothing to do with. For some reason, that's just the way it works. <laughs> what are two words you would use to describe your mom? Slash the head cook. As a head cook? Yes. Raw commitment. This is the inventory manager. She goes by the real name of head cook, but no. I don't cook. I manage. And that's Aunt Marg in a nutshell. She manages all the groceries, meats, fruits, and the cooks. Anything we need for our wacky recipes, we just scribble it on this board here, and she gets it for us from town. She does all the shopping, and basically whenever she sees a need here in the kitchen, she comes on over and helps us out. I'm getting my morning dose of stability. Talk about this dishwasher for a second. This dishwasher is the best asset in this kitchen. N next to me, of course. Anyways, she's pretty great. She washes at a very, very high temperature, and you basically push all your dirty dishes in on this side, and it comes out on the other side completely clean and sanitized. 
truly an amazing asset. Invest in a dishwasher. That's, that's the moral of the story. Time to tackle the beast, part two. Caffeinated kids. the water should be for the beef. Now we have clean meat. my interior. also part of the mission. pre-fry our fries the day before and then a few minutes before dinner you just take them out of the fridge really turn that temperature up on your fryer and then you just fry them to a crisp
had this meal at supper, but I need to incorporate it into my video, so... Washing my hands Corona style. Look at this heart. holding my camera. Everybody's just like, what in the world is this kid up to now? Well, you know, <laughs> there's always something going on. Hi. I would have sieved these out and then ran the oil through, but now I just gotta deal with the consequences. I'll do better next time. See, this is me learning from my mistakes. Brandon, how's the chicken? Nah. How's the chicken? How's the chicken? Nah. She's not a very good advertiser. I don't think my family is a very good uh, representation of my cookweed. How's the chicken? How's the chicken? I see they like my chicken. Mm -hmm. Hey Talia, how's the chicken? How's the chicken? We'll, uh, we'll give thanks. Father, we want to thank you for daily providing our needs. For these gifts of food and drink that we daily enjoy. Feed us, you bless us. Spiritually and physically, Lord, we have all that we need for life and for godliness. And Lord, we attribute it to you as you are the source of our strength and our hope, a lifter up of our souls, and uh, you have made it possible, Lord, that we are what we are. Thank you. Help us to daily live by that. Watch over us. Lead and guide us. Thank you again in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So right after kitchen cleanup, the cooks usually go home and have their afternoon nap kind of thing. I personally, however, am not a fan of sleep. It's a very unpopular opinion. I do it when I absolutely have to, when I am beat. But other than that, I'll just occupy myself with other things outside of sleep.
want to make everybody happy to see you. Bring a pot of coffee. Okay. Yes, please. Yes, coffee. See, I told you. What incarnation? <laughs> Just the effort, just another day cooking. Uh, yeast got a little carried away. The, the yeast got a little excited this morning. I need 75 cups of white flour. 16, 24, 32, 40, 48. your size in one hour. Alrighty? Don't disappoint me. This is an old Hutterite staple. It's called Greitenslick. Crackling bread would be your English word for it, but we all go by Greitenslick. And it used to be an old Hutterite staple, Invented way back when and still loved by all today. We usually call the ladies over when there's a lot of work to be done, and so today we call them over to make Schuttenkapfle, which is another Hutterite staple. In English, you would call it um, cottage cheese pierogies. And it's so, so good. So this is the fried Schuttenkopfle. It's got dough on the outside and cottage cheese on the inside. And it's hot. And it's so good. So you dip it in whipped cream. And then you just put some syrup on that whipped cream. And then you just... This is my third one and I am lactose intolerant. So <laughs> I'm going to have a good night. So what's the big hype? We always have them, right? We always have these. These are... The old version of the chicken cup. We just bread them and then bake them for health purposes. It's good to be healthy, trust me. But let me show you how I eat healthy. <laughs> We're not gonna show this part of the tip. So this chart is the main attraction for a lady gathering at least once a week. It's the cook week calendar. Okay, so every girl and lady from the age of 17 to 50 gets a cook week. Mine, as you can see, is right here. Adina, I'm gonna be cooking April on the 25th week, allegedly. The reason I say allegedly is sometimes these cook weeks get a little mixed up due to babies, operations, trips, or anything that upsets the fruit basket. So yeah, that's that. I know one thing for sure. It slips down the hatch real easy. Yeah. Good job, Aunt Mark. Another thing this outfit does, 
is prepare the meals five days in advance. So today is um, Tuesday, and this is Saturday's dinner. Other times it's the exact opposite. For example, right now I'm trying to hurry with this. They're trying to hurry with that because we've got to beat the clock in five minutes. Mm, look at them working. My poor camera. Are you okay? Okay. All done. Let's see at this mess. Bye bye for supper. Good evening, everybody. It's supper time. It's supper time. Exquisite. Mm. Meh. Yeah, I knew you'd say that. Edmonton without me? Yes. <laughs> How dare you? This is so weird. Dude, this is so Don't weird. <laughs> so every week, I'm gonna say every other week just to be safe, my uncle goes to the city like Edmonton and he brings you a whole bunch of groceries because it takes a lot to feed um, 170-ish people and Lloyd can't sustain us. Lloyd is too... Lloyd is too small for for this. You do know how crazy you look. I do know how crazy I look. Here she is. Stuck in up the kitchen once again. Alright, so 
Today I want to introduce you to another one of my biggest supporters and that is my Aunt Miriam. I call her Myrna for short, so Myrna has pushed me everywhere where I am right now. She pushed me onto YouTube for like months and months before I decided to do it. I just got tired of her nagging me and then I was like, fine Myrna, I'll do YouTube videos, okay? Okay. And then she um, forced me to do that car commercial, but it's okay because I got a lot of experience from it. Then she just pushes me into every small cranny and crack that she sees possible. She believes in me way more than I believe in myself and I am entirely grateful for that and I hope someday I can be just like her. She kind of deserves the credit for this channel, okay? So, thanks Myrna. Seven o'clock, and the gang's still here. So you call a hard-working bunch of ladies. Homo sapiens. We don't approve of that word. <laughs> you don't know what a Homo sapien is. I do know what a Homo sapien is, but it sounds like anyway. Human. We're not humans. We're ladies. <laughs> are you dumb? Or are you dumb? How does your mind work? 